Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17 beta 7 has been out for a few days and released along with iOS 17 public beta 5 and many other betas as well. There's even more features that have been found since the initial iOS 17 beta 7 is out what's new video. So we'll talk about that. We'll also talk about some news and also the experience of iOS 17 beta 7 as I've been using it full time on my 14 pro max and iPad pro. We'll talk about your experience as well, based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, Video, there's an incredible 34,000 votes and 312 comments. I've gone through all of the comments, determined what the overall experience is like, and we'll take a look at that a little bit later and talk about your comments and experience as well. Now, the first thing is battery health. We've been talking a lot about that with iPhone 14s over the past year, how it's sort of depleted faster due to betas and more. And the Apple store app shows that. And I showed that before, but I wanted to show you one more thing in here in the Apple store support app. If we go in here, go to repairs and physical damage, we can go to battery service and of course find our best options for this. It takes a moment to load and then we can check our battery performance. Now we'll do this. We'll look at battery more in depth a little bit later, but also this app gives some more information where it has a good to know section and also a section about store hours. And if we select the Apple South park location, since it's an Apple store, there's a section called good to know where we have wheelchair accessibility, vision accessibility support and device recycling. We also have the hours and also devices service there. So this has been updated with all of this information. Now, as far as the upcoming Apple event, where we're going to see the iPhone 15 and some new Apple watches, the last time we had an event on September 12th, which is when it's expected, we actually had the invites go out on August 30th. So based on that, we could see the invites go out sometime next week. That's typically what they do if it's going to be in that week. So September 12th or 13th is when it's expected. So we should see those invites this coming week for those of you that have been asking. And speaking of the iPhone 15, it's said to drop the gold color this year. And we're expecting four different colors this year with maybe a darker blue than we anticipated originally, then sort of a lighter titanium color, silver, and then space black. No longer would we have gold. So that's that's something they would be getting rid of this year, which is a bit of a surprise, but maybe difficult to do with a titanium frame. Now, as far as new features, let's take a look at music first. And when you ask Siri to play music, it gives you a new dialogue with beta seven play hope by NF. Now you'll see it says maybe you wanted, and you can tap on this and see some different options. If we do that with another song, play Artemis by Lindsey Sterling. It takes a second and then again says maybe you wanted and suggests other songs as well that you can play. So this is a little bit of an update from what we've had before. So a small change, but kind of nice in case maybe it misses what you say. Now, if we go into maps and if you route to some place that doesn't have good cell reception, if you scroll down in your directions, you'll actually see a couple different options where it says limited service download map. So it's suggesting that you actually download the offline map. You can select the area you want to download where it says there's no service and then select either the same area or a larger area and tap download. So it's really nice that it's just letting you know ahead of time that you may need that option within the home app. They've updated this so that if maybe you tap on a different option that you have, maybe a home pod mini tap on it here, you can just swipe it away now where before you sort of had to tap it away. And now you can just swipe down and it goes away. So it's a nice little update to the user interface. Not a huge change though. Now, also one thing that's hard to show is if I go to airdrop something to maybe a Mac that's running Mac OS Sonoma, this screen here will actually be updated with the Mac OS Sonoma wallpaper. It shows up sometimes then sometimes reverts or jumps back, but I have seen it updated. If we go into settings, they've updated this a little bit where I mentioned this in the initial what's new video, where it actually had some new wording and changes to recovery key that can be found under your name at the top under sign in and security. We have account recovery within account recovery. We have our recovery key. If you have a recovery key set up and enabled, it actually made me re verify that key as I saw before with some of the updates I mentioned in the what's new video. So that's something I saw. I'm curious if you had that issue as well. Now in health, they've updated it again. So if we go into health, go to mental well-being, and then go to state of mind and then log our state of mind, they continue to refine this. So if we go to beta six here on the left, do the exact same thing, 
go into state of mind and then log a state of mind, we have the same sort of look initially, but it changes again with small changes. So if we go in here, you'll see the rate of the rings has changed. So instead of changing the colors this time around, they've actually changed the speed of the rings. This is such a small change, but odd in some of the details that Apple actually pays attention to. But you'll see here as I change it, the ring speed actually is different from one version to the other. Also, when you install an update, you may or may not have seen this latest update where it says download in progress. If you have automatic updates enabled, it says iPhone is started downloading an update automatically. Once completed, iPhone will attempt to install the update later when iPhone is locked and the battery has enough charge. And then you can just tap install once downloaded. So that's a small change, but that wasn't necessarily new in beta seven, but people with beta six updating saw that when it comes to the next beta, we could expect iOS 17 beta eight as soon as the 29th or 30th. This is based off of last year where we had eight betas beta seven with iOS 16 ended in an a with the build number and also beta eight did. So it depends on how ready Apple thinks this is. Now, if we go on what we had last year, we'll have beta eight on the 29th or 30th with a release candidate within a couple weeks after that. And a final release, most likely around the 18th of September. We don't know that hundred percent, but we'll know a lot more information. If Apple sends out the event invites this coming week around the 30th, if it's on the 30th, most likely the event will be on the 12th of September. If we have that date as the event date, then we know either we'll have it that week for iOS 17 releasing to the public. We've seen that in the past, but most likely we'll have it on the 18th. That's usually what Apple does is have their event announcement, their pre-orders for the iPhone on the 15th. Then they would have the release of iOS 17 and then the release of iPhone 15 to the public on the 22nd. That's very typical of what we see. Then of course, we'll move on to iOS 17.1. That's where we'll most likely see the betas where we get the journaling app Apple's talked about and some other features we've been waiting for. So a lot to look forward to. It's going to be a very busy couple of weeks with releases. Hopefully we'll see beta eight in a release canon and have all of the final dates very, very soon. We could also see iOS 16.7 RC fairly soon, along with the 16.7 release before iOS 17 releases to the public. So we could expect that within the next couple of weeks, along with a ton of other updates as well. Another thing I wanted to mention before we talk about the overall experience is that Apple released a Safari technology preview this week, along with all the other updates. So if we go in and download Safari technology preview, you'll see it's version 177 that allows you to check the latest technologies, utilize them on your website and see if they work. It's available for Mac OS Sonoma and Mac OS Ventura. One other thing I wanted to mention quickly has to do with the UK government where they could ban Apple security updates, not really ban them per se, but actually have to approve them. So under this article here by nine to five Mac, it says under the latest plans, tech companies would need to notify the British government before rolling out security fixes that might be refused permission if it blocks a vulnerability that's being exploited by security services. So that's something that obviously could slow down security updates and wouldn't necessarily allow for the fast rollout of fixes or updates in general. So that's something I hope they really work out and get this to be more secure first. And then we go from there, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now, as far as the overall experience this week, I did want to take a look at the camera first and the camera seems to be doing pretty well. I don't notice any significant updates from beta six to beta seven, but if we take a few photos here, let me know what you think about it. So you'll see a couple different ones here. I don't know that I notice a ton of differences, but if you do let me know in the comments below, I think they've really worked on this quite a bit to make it much better with iOS 17 compared to iOS 16. Now, as far as bugs that have been fixed, well, most people say this is very, very stable the overall experience is quite refined and it's just much better and much more polished compared to what we've had before. Yes, it still has some issues, but it seems much, much better. And the usability of it is just great. There are some bugs, but most of those bugs have been fixed and you can see those in the feedback app under inbox. And then if you go into the release notes, there's a ton of different release notes. I showed this in the what's new video. There's over 70 things that have been resolved. So it's great to see them fixing those, but there are still some things that are happening. One of those of course is the notification bug where it just sort of jumps in. It's a little bit slow for whatever reason. Another one has to do with the keyboard bug returning for some where sometimes the keyboard doesn't pop up and show properly.
Also, the phone is heating up quite a bit when charging, according to most people. And while it will, will typically heat up a little bit when you're charging, if you're fast charging, it's going to be hotter, especially if you have a case on or you're in a specific environment, but it shouldn't be so hot that you can barely touch it. I've actually noticed this too with wireless charging in my car. It gets incredibly hot. So there's definitely some sort of bug there. And that of course can reduce your overall battery health if it's super hot. Also, one other thing that seems to be an issue is weather's not necessarily updating or syncing across devices. So it says 93 degrees here where I live, then 93 degrees there. It's in sync here. It's in sync on my watch, but some people are saying it's not adding up. Sometimes they're completely off. Also, sometimes it's become unresponsive, more so in third party apps, but going in, maybe swiping home to the dynamic island, I've seen it stutter or just be slow sometimes. But for whatever reason, sometimes it's unresponsive, but nothing like earlier betas. One other bug I do have is on the iPad. I've found with the Magic Keyboard that it doesn't behave as you would expect sometimes, specifically with third party apps. So if I use it first, maybe just to use Command Space and search using Spotlight Search, then go into my app, it will work fine. However, if I unlock the device, go into YouTube, all of a sudden the space bar and the arrow keys, nothing works. Then I have to hit command space, have it do an Apple command, go back in and then it will work. So it's definitely got an odd bug there. There's been bugs with the magic keyboard all along iOS 17 betas or iPad OS 17. The good thing is the overall experience is much better. According to most people, it seems to be fairly stable, very few crashes, very few issues overall. There's definitely some odd bugs still here, but nothing that really stops you from using the device. As far as overall performance, while well, I mentioned the few stutters here and there, if we go to the app library and scroll, ProMotion is smooth when you're using it. And just using the phone in general is nice and fast with the exception of those stutters and third party app lockups. In general though, it seems to be a really good experience and smooth. The nice thing is, is when you're actually using the phone, it seems to stay nice and cool most of the time. The only time I've noticed it heat up a lot is when it's using the neural engine. This is specifically when you're maybe identifying something within maybe a photo. And this is a dog sent in by Cameron and Connor here. You'll see a golden retriever when it's identifying this or trying to figure that information out. Sometimes it heats the processor up outside of using the neural engine. It's actually stayed nice and cool. So much better than before benchmarks I showed in the what's new video were better as well. Let's take a look at the thermal camera though. You'll see it actually heated up a little bit, but we're at 89.5 degrees. So it's staying fairly cool in the hottest area. And in Celsius, we've got 32.5 degrees. So it's staying fairly cool. It's cooling down quickly. It's just when you're charging that it seems to get overly warm. So that's kind of odd, but that's what we're seeing as far as battery health and battery life. If we go down to battery, battery health and charging, I'm still at 89%. This is after 282 cycles, according to coconut battery and my battery life has not been great. It's still sort of poor, not much better than beta six. You'll see yesterday I used about 80% of the battery and had two hours and 30 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 10 minutes of screen idle time. If we go to today, I had two hours and 43 minutes of screen active time and used about 60% of my battery. Now this is not what I'm hearing from most people. Most people I'm hearing from say it's as good as iOS 16.6, .6, maybe a little worse. Some say it's much better. It just depends on who you ask. And if we take a look at another user using iOS 17 beta seven on an 11 pro Mac with 95% battery health. He had three hours and 59 minutes of screen on time. And as you can see here during that time used about 75% of his battery. So it's not incredible battery life, but it's pretty decent overall. The day after that, he had two hours and 30 minutes and used about 50% of his battery. I'd say iOS 17 still needs some battery refinement, but everything else seems to be progressing as you would expect and fairly polished. Usually late when we get into the betas, Apple refines everything else with battery life and more. So we should see a big improvement with the next one. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17 beta seven, if you're on beta six, of course you should install beta seven. The same is true with public betas from public beta four to iOS 17 public beta five. However, if you're wanting to try these out, just know that you're going to have some bugs and I would make sure you have a backup. Otherwise I think it's safe to try it out at least, but just know you will probably still have some issues here and there. But if you're willing to deal with those and you want to try the new features now, the, now is actually the time to do that as we get closer to a final release. 
Now, as far as what you had to say about the experience, let's take a look at that. Zomboy4313 said, using iOS 17 beta 7 and it's going well on my SE second gen. The battery life has improved slightly and battery life when the iPhone is on standby has improved majorly but the heat seems to be a bit of an issue, mainly with charging. Dentist KK says iOS 17 beta 7 is fairly stable. Only concerns remain are battery life, screen on time, and random heating up, which causes idle battery drain more than it should on my iPhone 13. Olive Loaf, KL6754 said, I'm on developer beta 7 and it is really stable. Only issue is my device gets really hot while charging. This didn't happen on the previous betas. And you'll see 14 people agreed with them. So lots of different thumbs up there with people having the same issue. Dominic Vitakovic said, runs perfectly on my iPhone 13. Sometimes some profile photos and messaging app notifications, WhatsApp and Messenger disappear for a brief moment, but nothing else. Battery life is expected, but I would say much better than any other betas or iOS 16 betas overall. Also, I've been using betas on watch, iPad, and Mac, and I must say these are one of the most stable betas for sure. Wish Rajani said running iOS 17 Dev Beta 7 on my iPhone 13. It's a lot better in performance when compared to the previous beta. Battery performance has also improved a lot in this beta. It almost feels like I'm using the final public release version. No app crashes and no glitches found. BSE Wall says iPhone 13 Pro Max with iOS 17 Beta 7. Some minor lock screen glitches, not as bad as in your video. No heat issues under normal use, especially compared to Beta 6. The OS does seem more temperature sensitive. When in direct sun, the screen dims more often because of heat or stops charging due to heat, way more often than iOS 6. Rob's Metal Covers 1452 said running public beta 5. Battery life is awesome, haven't had too many problems, just little hiccups, like Facebook was laggy but now it's better. The Google Photos app was really bad but an update today fixed everything. So that's everything in iOS 17 beta 7. This is seeming much more polished than it was before and a much better experience. As we're getting closer to the final release I think it will get much much better, so hopefully they'll finally fix that notification bug and much more. Let me know if you'd like them to add anything to iOS 17, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below, maybe some different features we could get with iOS 17.1 and beyond. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.